What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with my Season 1 recap for Star Wars The Bad Batch. So I did have a chance to watch the season finale a couple of times, and while I didn't particularly like the finale, I kind of see where they're going with it and want to see where they're going to go with Season 2. Um, overall, as far as what they achieved in the season, it feels like a lot of it was or could have been covered in more of in a five episode arc um, to cover the first half of the season um, especially with the um, kind of semi-resolution with Crosshair um, that felt a lot of uh, what happened or what kind of resolved by episode like five or six and the rest of the season um, potentially develops with the rest of the Star Wars universe as a whole with the rise of the Empire but it did kind of resolve one of the biggest uh, fundamental changes in the universe between episodes 3 and 4 as far as the rise of the Empire and it's something that's said by Tech as far as um, he doesn't or he under just because he understands how Crosshair is doesn't mean he agrees with him and it's also a conversation that happens uh, mostly between Hunter and Crosshair that um, their choices are leading them in different ways and Hunter believes that they don't have to be enemies but Crosser is saying that he made his decision and that the time of the Republic and the clones and the Jedi are at an end and the Empire is on the rise and the universe needs order and stability and all of that. So it's a lot of, so like I said for me I'm kind of undecided especially with the season finale because the biggest thing it the season resolves is that the Empire is now in, full, in control of the cloning technology on Kamino and um, with the Kamino, Kamino facility destroyed it potentially bars other um, factions that are not the Empire from getting their hands on that technology or the Kamino is going to other um, political forces to give them power over the Empire. Um, and the thing that I did like though that I will say that it was good was, um, I, and I always forget which um, Kaminoan she is, I think it was Namase or Lamasu, one of, the one that was um, taking, the scientist that was taken captive by the Empire is now in a secret facility who's going to be work, working for the Empire. So it sounds like as far as potentially season two or potentially just a, um, expanded part of season two is that we're going to see the cloning facility that was set up for the emperor and have that tie in directly with um episode nine the rise of skywalker to see the all the genetic um cloning that was taking place in order to clone a person who is strong in the force so overall the, that so the thing that was good about the series is the potential for future episodes that in story arcs that could be brought about but the season itself didn't really go too far part of it's because it is season one so it depends on what they do with season two that i'm going to reserve a positive or negative judgment on it so for me i'm kind of as far as grading the season i'm giving it about a b minus to a c plus it was generally good there's a few pieces that were positive um, notably with the beginning of the season and uh, Kane and Jarrus escaping from the clones, um, finding out about Omega and how she's the beta clone um, from Kamino and that the Bad Batch is, at, is tangentially related to work that was done with her. So she's like the alpha Bad Batch and the rest of the group is the result of the testing with her. Um, and I like that she understands that she's um, the sibling of the Bad Batch and that they're all brothers so it's not so all of that stuff as far as family and that they're brothers sounds like it was taking into consideration everything that and how they are but like um, Tech said Crosshair is the way he is he's always been one of the more harsher clones with the genetic manipulation so he is the way he is and he can't do anything about it but his rationale was sound for him and his point of view as well that the empire is on the rise and even though he understands that he's just a number and just a clone to the empire the empire values the worth of all of its citizens so if he has something to offer then that is of more worth than him being a clone so 
I'm continuing to hold out hope as far as season two goes that we get to see um, more missions as far as what the Bad Batch is gonna do. Um, personally, I would like to see more of their interactions with the Rebellion and potentially going on some of those um, um, high risk targets like kind of, kind of sound like the more secret stuff like wherever um, that Kaminoan the secret facility that the Kaminoan was taken to and potentially have a tie into things like um, Saw Sa Guerrera or maybe the events of Rogue One um, and all of that um, maybe they're or ha maybe have like a retro tie into having helped um, the guy that helped create the Death Star get the pilot um, out of the facility on Edu um, and that sort of stuff. So um, things like that, and then also just like a, the tie into the cloning facility for the Emperor, and more of generally just more of what the Empire has been up to as far as the rise. And because Crosshair was a part of the Bad Batch, that we see more of what he does with the Empire. Maybe he ends up seeing all the various things that the Empire and the Emperor are doing, and he ends up turning back to the Bad Batch and returning to them because he realizes that there's certain lines that can't be crossed, and that's kind of what Hunter was aiming at, is that they have to make a choice um, based on their own morals, and that they're even though they're clones, they are their own individuals, and... Um, just be and they don't have to necessarily follow the line with the current political regime even though or they or they kind of want to support the regime that values individuals for who they are rather than forcing them to subscribe to a particular um political notion so like i said overall the grade of the season i gave it about a b minus to a c plus so the animations were good sound was good the general idea of all the episodes was good but it feels like they could have gone a little bit further. Um, it was fine with some of the stuff with Sid, but um, for me, I'm thinking that with all we saw in all these episodes is that um, they could have set up a lot of the stuff that she was doing for season two as far as getting the riskier missions and her um, working mate potential, whether she's working for the cartels or the Rebellion, she can get those um, high-risk missions and have that set up for season two for to send the Bad Batch on those risky missions because of some of the stuff they did in the first season. And she can see that they're capable, able to take care of themselves. They need the money, so they'll take the job sort of thing. So that's the flip side is that maybe even in season two, she's that ends up being her role is that she is a part of the Rebellion and she wanted to see how trustworthy they, they are in order to give them those more high-risk secret admissions to help um, aid in the Rebellion. So um, I will continue my review of The Bad Batch once that returns. I forget if Season 2 is coming later in 2021 or in 2022, but whenever it comes out, I will definitely be giving it a watch. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, stuff I missed, stuff you liked, didn't like, and that sort of stuff for the Bad Batch, then you can comment on the post on Twitter at PatelN01 or help support the show and comment on the post on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. And of course, the website is headphonesnail.reviews for all subscription options, supporting the show, um, past episodes, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in, and until next time.